know a lot of you, and some of you I'm meeting for the first time, <clears throat> I kind of want you to know where I'm coming from. Um, I'm just finishing my sixth year in the Senate. Before that, I was in local government 15 years. The thing I learned in local government was that I was accountable. I was accountable to everybody who walked into my office and wanted to know how I spent their tax dollars. You had to be really transparent because my counter was right there and you could walk in any time. I also learned that you don't duplicate services. You do what your community needs and you don't redo or undo something that's not necessary. Local government was a great place and I never thought I would end up going to the sun, but the door opened, I walked through it, and I thought to work on some of the issues that I care a lot about. One of those is disabilities. I'm the chairman of the Human Services Committee for the Senate. All the bills that go that come to my for aging, for Medicaid oversight, for uh, for children and family services, disabilities, those all come to my committee, and it's a full-time job just doing that. And I absolutely love it because I hope that somehow we start to put some of the pieces together that are missing. Now I know Terry said that there's two groups here tonight. There's the water aerobics group. Woo! Okay. And I gotta tell you, I don't have a lot of news or legislation <laughs> for you. So there hasn't been a lot of legislation this year on that. Uh, I do want it, but for the rest of you who I think have an interest in disability. Okay. You should know there's a special needs caucus in Springfield. And I chair it. And it's men and women and Republicans and Democrats. It's upstate and downstate. It's both houses. We're working together to try to deal with some of these most difficult issues that you deal with every day in your life. If you've got a family member. I want to just hit a couple bills that one's been signed and one's on its way. So we're all current. Uh, a bill that Senator Hayes introduced that says that People with intellectual or developmental disabilities will now be able to be treated just as with an Amber Alert. So you will be considered an endangered missing person. You're no longer going to age out. If something happens that your, if your one of your loved ones is missing and has a disability, they can be treated the same way. There should be some, a little bit of peace of mind to that. Also, I want you to know that Department of Human Services is going to be charged, if the governor signs a bill, to create a pilot program to make sure that we are not just hiring people for seven or eight dollars an hour and hoping they come back. We're actually developing a pilot program to credential people. So they're going to get paid. So they are going to learn. So they're going to invest their time and their career in an important service that we just simply don't have enough people in. So we're trying to create a whole a, a pilot program to do that. The governor better sign that. It's yeah. on his desk. Um, you also know, and we could get into the to the weeds on this, but I don't know if you want maybe during questions. You know the puns list. Yeah. We've got we've gone from three to two definitions. Yes. Um, I kind of like your guys' thoughts on it. Maybe during questions and answers. We restored autism funding. We restored best buddies funding, and we restored ARC. Illinois, which is a referral program. So there were some restorations made. We still have a lot to do, a lot to do in this area. So um, rather than me talking to you, I want you to know that I'm listening to your voices. I'd really like to spend some time hearing what you want to ask me. I may not have the answers, but if I don't have them tonight, I'll get them for you. And there are issues that we're going to be voting on in the, in the winter, and I'm putting this out to everybody. Every time I do a community forum now, I'm asking the same three questions. Where are you on, medic where are you on legalizing marijuana? And you don't have to respond. You don't have to respond. Where are you on, on online betting, sports betting online? Right? So, well, we're going to come back to some of these, okay? But, um, and you don't have to raise your hand, but if that's something you really are passionate about, I do, yeah? Just the clarity of marijuana, are you talking about medical marijuana? Or you all marijuana. The 
legalization of marijuana in Illinois. I think that's something we're going to be voting on next well, year. Well, it's already medical. Medical's already in place. The red tape is so So, I think this is a good time. Time. The question and So let's do the questions and answers. And I've got, and before I, I mean, I have all this paper for you guys. Um, some really good numbers on youth and disability in Chicago area and the disproportionate number of poor people and unemployed people, especially by race. There's some really good statistics if you guys want to take those. So why don't we do questions and answers? I mean, what do we what do we do about that? I mean, even I'm thinking about leaving Illinois because I feel like, how are we going to solve our problems? We're, we're just not making enough money in the state to fund all these beautiful things that you're talking about. What do we do about that? You know, we've got a big pension problem. I know for all of you guys who are teachers, I work at Abbott and we get a pension. We don't get a cost of living increase. We just get a, a dollar amount and that's it. Right. Is it fair that people retire from teaching and get these cost of living? I'm sorry, I don't want to be because I'm a liberal. But is it fair that at the end they, they retire with way more money than than they you know they were promised and then it's unsustainable. So what, what do we do about all this stuff? Just curious what you're thinking, what your thoughts are on this. So that is like one of the biggest, hugest problems, obviously. And that's why people are leaving Illinois, I think, because there hasn't been any predictability for businesses or communities. Um, we went over two years without a budget. How do you go? No state in the union has ever gone two years without a budget. We had an obstructionist governor in his office who refused to work with the Democrat majority in the House and the Senate. He was determined to break us. What he did was he damaged the state, not beyond repair, but it's going to take some serious time to get back to where we need to be. And in the meantime, businesses looked at Illinois, why do I want to? I'm afraid to stay here. I'm afraid to come here. I'm afraid to grow here. I think we have started to turn the corner. This spring, I saw Democrats and Republicans sit down together. It wasn't necessarily leadership. It was just like regular people like me who sat with, in each other with at round tables and pencils and pens and tried to come up with a budget that they thought was fair to everybody. And May 31st, we passed a balanced budget. And the governor, because he knew he was in over his head, signed it. So we have started to change the trajectory of how we feel about our state and how we can work together. Now we need to build, we need more businesses. We just do. The pension problem is massive. I have talked about the pension problem since the first day I started running seven years and ago. And it's part of the Illinois Constitution. So it is. It's it. protected. Right. But remember the teachers especially, don't get Social Security. It's true. When a teacher signs up to work, they're not going to get Social Security in Illinois. We're kind of weird like that. Um, so the, that is that 3% compound in colon is definitely huge hardship. It's unsustainable. It is what's causing the liability that, you know, that we're looking at in the billions, but it is protected. So there's a couple, three different ways we have really started to try to address it. We have three tiers now for state employees. The first one was, the first one is this 3% compounded. That's the one that is driving the hardship, quite honestly. Tier two, very diminished. It's not a problem. And the tier three is giving people an option for a 401k. Is giving people an opportunity to buy out their pension or to buy out part of that 3% compounded. There are options that Tier 3 hasn't really come into fruition yet because we don't know. It's too new. We don't know how many people are going to take advantage of it. We might save a lot of money. We might not save much at all. But we are starting to address that. Um, but that's, that is the, the big elephant in the room. Yeah. First thing we have to do is elect a governor who believes in the state of Illinois. It was funny to watch. I think a lot of people had a reaction of laughing. But the video of, of our governor from the state of Illinois recruiting other governors to bash around the state was one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen a politician in Illinois do. And that's a low bar. We've done a lot of crazy things over the years in Illinois. But to go 
out there and, and deliberately try and hurt the state of Illinois, not just have policies that are hurting us, deliberately try and hurt us. There's no wonder that four years uh, later we're worse off. So the first thing is we need a new governor. And then when we get down there in January, we're going to have a lot of big challenges. Uh, and in order to do that, it's going to take a number of years to dig ourselves out of this mess. In particular, they got way worse. We went from $4 billion in unpaid bills, which is not good, to $16 billion in unpaid bills in three years under Governor Rauner. So we have a huge hole to dig out of, and everyone here is suffering because of it. So I think the real answer is we got new, new leadership in Springfield. It's going to be a major part of that. But then we have to really focus on the things that make it look great. Because there are a lot of reasons why we all live here. It's not an accident. We didn't just trip and fall out of Illinois instead of Wisconsin. We came to Illinois because Illinois had amazing schools. Illinois had amazing colleges. Illinois had great job opportunities in Abbott, in downtown Chicago in 1871, and some of the tech incubators and other healthcare companies in the suburbs of here. There's a lot of great things about Illinois. But it's easy to forget that when we have a governor who reminds everyone just how awful we are. So, uh -oh. this is I'm my time to break in and say one of the things that we're going to be talking about is the graduated income tax. Anybody want to chime in on, I've read about it, I think it's a good idea, or no way, no how, or I need more information? Graduated, graduated income tax in the state of Illinois. Just so you know, like it. So the more you make, the higher the rate is that you pay. Sort of like on your federal tax. If you don't make very much, the rate you pay is lower than those people who make a lot of money. What's the line? That's the question. Yeah. So <laughs> it would be a considerable amount of money, new money that would help us pay for services and pay our debt down. But people here, especially in our district, because we all, a lot of people are educated and make good money, would probably be those people paying more. There's that. So are we... Is that a deal breaker for this district? Well, Julie, Julie can you uh, let everyone know what the tax rate is right now? Uh -oh. So right now we're 4.95, uh -oh. which is, compared to our surrounding states, very low. Other states around us have a service tax, a lot of service taxes. Your dry cleaning, your nail salon, your car wash, your oil change, uh -oh. your lawn service. That hasn't caught any fire. We've kind of kicked that around and nobody has said, wow, is that a great idea. Other states balance their budget and have revenue from sources other than us. Taxing your retirement income. Who wants the retirement income tax? I don't. Okay, then stay in Illinois. Don't go to your surrounding neighboring states because they tax. Well, and the other piece of all this, too, is how we feel the taxes every year, the property taxes. You know, knocking on doors for the last year, and not a day goes by that I don't hear someone say, you know, my property taxes are too high. Well, one solution to that is the ways in which we deduct our property taxes on our tax bill. And our champion, Julie Morrison, has been fighting in Springfield so that this tax bill that Trump passed has capped our property tax deduction to $10,000, which impacts our community way worse than most. And that's something Julie's trying to fix. So we got that passed in the Senate. It was all teed up and ready to go. We had almost a unanimous vote in the Senate. And the House didn't take it up. And I'm not really sure why. I'm not done with it. I'm going to go back and veto with it. I'm going to see if we can't get that passed. Because we all need, we need those deductions. We count on those deductions when we buy our homes. It shouldn't be a $10,000 cap total. So there is a workaround that other states are doing, California, New Jersey, some of the other high property tax states. And we're going to try to copy that and see we can also take advantage of it. Does anyone else have a question? Feel free to just chime in. Uh, yeah? Every day when I'm driving, I see construction. It appears to me that it's the same roads that get reconstructed every year. And I know that's where a lot of money seems to be going into. What can be done about that? Are those state roads or are those county roads? They appear to be state roads, but I'm not sure. Okay, so I would say probably the first thing is to figure out if it's a county or a state road. Um, the county and the state, they both put out, they project out 10, 15, 20 years, which roads are going to be repaired. They have a schedule. I mean, I would, I probably need to know more specifically about what roads you drive on. I would look into it for you. But what I'm saying is it appears that Every year, there's loads of road construction. 
construction. Oh. Sometimes the same rows. Mm -hmm. They appear oh. to be. I don't know if they're county or state or whatever okay. that is. But it seems to oh. me that's where a lot of money is going. Yeah. Oh. Part of that is a short term versus long term problem. A few of us were talking earlier. Oh. Uh, Aaron's here somewhere, Aaron Zellick and I were talking a little bit about short-term planning versus long-term planning. And one of the problems historically about roads, mostly state, local municipalities are usually better about this because they have better control for their own funding. Highland Park is working very hard on this issue. But the state spends money more for the short term. So they, they'll go five years, maybe, with the concrete before they start getting potholes again. And then you got to rebuild the roads. So it's cheaper, but then you have to go to rebuild it five years later. It's a short-term decision which hurts us all in the long term. So that, that's part of the problem. Yeah. Well, that's part of the problem, but what's being done about the problem? So, you know, we appropriate funds to every agency. We appropriate X many millions or whatever to the Department of Transportation. So I would tell you that if you had got a, if you got a specific issue or complaint and you think something is being uh, not managed correctly, you need to call me, and I'll figure out what's going on, and I'll get back to you about it. I'll, if I don't know, I can't do anything about it. She can actually look into that specific thing that yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, I'll find out. But you're right. We should. We don't want to waste money just contracting like patchwork continuously when we maybe need to do a whole repair. Yeah. So it just seems to be uh, your job. Is what has to be one of the most frustrating. Carol, speak up. Uh, here, what you've been doing has to be a very frustrating position to be in. What makes you hopeful or optimistic that you can make changes? So Carol is saying that this is a. That sounds like this is a very frustrating position. That Bob and I want to go to Springfield and have again. What makes me hopeful that we can go down there and do anything to improve it? Yes. Yeah. So, I, I'm hopeful because, as I said, in May, for the first time, we saw a change. We saw just regular people coming together. I'm hopeful because I think we're going to have a new governor. I can't tell you how important that is. You can have the cure for cancer. You can have both houses pass that bill unanimously. You put it on his desk. If he doesn't sign it, he goes nowhere. We need a governor who's going to work with us. We've had Republican governors who've worked with Democratic legislatures. It's not that you're just a Democrat. It's that you are willing to compromise and work for the better of the state. And we have not had that for four years. Um, and also, uh, the Senate generally is able to pass a budget. Uh, for the number of, for every year that we didn't have a budget, that Julie was talking about, the Senate passed the budget. It was the House of Representatives that wasn't able to come together, mostly because of partisan issues. Specifically, the Republicans decided they would never support a budget at all. And they, it was partially because Governor Rauner told them no. So we went a few years without a state budget. So now, we got a budget, not just this last year, it was bipartisan. The year before that, the Senate passed the budget, got to the House, the House passed the budget, and the governor vetoed it. We went back to the House, and the House overrid, overrode the veto with, uh, with several Republicans who stood up to the leader of their party because it was, it was hurting the state. Governor Rauner was trying to hurt the state again and again and again. And the Republicans in the House, a number of them, about a dozen, stood up and said enough. Our community is hurting. That's a sign of optimism and of hope. Yeah. Those are people that care about the state and less about the, the optics of the politics. People that realize their communities, their schools, their human services, their state facilities, their roads, all of those programs were being cut because the state didn't have the money because we didn't have a budget. Yep. I'm interested in uh, what's the status of a, a minimum wage uh, law for Illinois that um, we are not at the top of the uh, charts for minimum wage and that has I think something to do with not drawing people to come here. But I'm particularly concerned about people, uh, health care workers, people that are caring for disabled or elderly, fragile people and are making very poor wages and are just because of that not reliable. Mm. You can't count on them 
coming on a regular basis because it's not